and welcome Grade 11 accounting students. In today's lesson, we're going to be focusing on the tangible asset note. So in other words, we're going to be doing a recap on asset disposal, buying and selling of fixed assets, and of course, some depreciation calculation. So you guys know the drill. Make sure you've got pen and paper in front of you. Make sure you've got your calculators with you, and let's get started. Right, now the tangible asset note. What we're going to do in the beginning or before we start with an activity, we're going to be recapping some concepts that you've already covered. So let's get started. Okay, now remember guys, your tangible asset note, yes, it's part of the balance sheet, but it's simply your general ledger presented in a different format. Now remember guys, not everyone is able to read a general ledger. So the accountant at the end of the financial year takes the information from the general ledger and prepares financial statements. And when it comes to tangible assets, they prepare the tangible asset note. So let's recap on what the note looks like. So we've got the following. Okay, your three tangible assets, which normally are land and buildings, vehicles, and equipment. Now, how does the general ledger start? Absolutely correct, with an opening balance. So similarly, your tangible asset note starts off with opening balances, balances at the beginning of the year. So if we go through this, you've got your carrying value at the beginning of the year. And how do we get our carrying value? We're going to take our cost minus our accumulated depreciation. Then, once we've recorded our carrying value at the beginning of the year, we then focus on what has happened during the year to change the carrying value. In other words, movements. How did the carrying value either increase or decrease during the financial year? So under movements, we find the following. Okay, so in order, additions at cost. Let's get a pen out. So we focus on additions at cost. Disposal at carrying value. In other words, when you sell, or when you get rid of certain assets that you no longer require. And then lastly, the last movement is depreciation. How much are you writing off on that asset during or at the end of the financial year? Right, the last part of your tangible asset note looks at what is the new balance at the end of the year. So your carrying value at the end of the financial year is calculated as follows. So here we're taking our cost at the end of the year and we're subtracting our accumulated depreciation at the end of the year. Okay, let's just get rid of that. Okay, right, so in a nutshell, guys, the tangible asset note often tested in your exam, and remember, we are busy preparing for the June exams, so please make sure that you know the format of this note, the actual format. You're going to start off with beginning of the year, movements, and then finally, end of the year. Right, let's quickly recap now on some calculations that you should know at this stage in terms of your tangible asset note. So in terms of the calculations, I've summarized this for you. And if possible, guys, try to either um, copy this or take it down. If you can't, maybe print out these notes. But this is not a, a very nice summary of all the calculations in terms of your tangible asset note. So let's start off with the first calculation that you all should be at this stage familiar with. Carrying value at the beginning of the year. So how do I get my carrying value at the beginning of the year? I'm going to take my cost at the beginning of the year and I'm going to subtract my accumulated depreciation also at the beginning of the year and that gives me my carrying value, the actual worth of the asset. Okay, All right, next calculation. Additions at cost. So when we talk about additions at cost, there's normally not much to calculate. It's normally given to you. But remember, here we are referring to, did you purchase any new assets during the financial year? And what was the cost price of the new asset with me? 
Right, the third calculation is quite a lengthy calculation. This is where there's asset disposal. So here you're calculating your disposal at carrying value. So how do we go about doing this calculation? We will take the cost price of the asset that we're selling or disposing, and we will then subtract the accumulated depreciation, very, very important guys, at the date of sale. I need you to remember that. So cost price of the asset you're selling minus the accumulated depreciation of the asset at the date of sale gives you the disposal value of the asset that you're selling or getting rid of. Or the disposal, let's just say that one more time, the disposal at carrying value that you're getting rid of. Okay. All right. Next calculation depreciation. Now, often we tend to forget that depreciation is normally made up of three individual calculations per asset. So what am I referring to? Here we're looking at your total depreciation that is written off on a particular asset. So it could be you're writing off depreciation on the disposal, the asset that you're disposing of, plus the depreciation on any new assets that you purchased during the year, as well as the old assets that you still have or you have for a long time, the depreciation on this asset. So a combination or an addition of all three will give you your total depreciation that you're writing off for the year. Okay. Right, then carrying value at the end of the year. Now remember, your note starts with carrying value at the beginning of the year. So end of the year, how do we calculate your carrying value? You will start off by taking your carrying value at the beginning of the year. You will then add additions, because remember, additions increase the value of your, your assets that you have. You will subtract disposal at carrying value because you're getting rid of this asset. So your carrying value decreases. And then finally, you will also subtract your depreciation because remember, every time you write off depreciation, the asset value decreases. The carrying value is now less. Okay, so that is the calculation for carrying value at the end of the year. All right, two more calculations to recap on. How do we now calculate your cost at the end of the year? So in order for us to calculate cost at year end, we will start off with what is my cost at the beginning of the year? What was my opening balance, my cost price opening balance? I will then add additions at cost. So if I bought a new vehicle, I will then add my additions and I will subtract the disposal cost price. Okay. All right. So that will then give you your cost at the end of the year. Now, remember guys, all of these calculations are simply your ledger accounts in a different format. That's all it is. So the moment you've forgotten a calculation, draw up a quick T account, and that will help you to understand whether you are going to add or subtract. Okay. Right, the last calculation that you will be required to do when completing the tangible asset note is your accumulated depreciation at the end of the year. Okay, so just as we did in the previous calculation, we will start off with accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year. We will then add the total depreciation on the asset the total depreciation, so you're going to add, and you will minus the accumulated depreciation on disposal or the accumulated depreciation that you transferred to asset disposal. That will then give you your accumulated depreciation at the end of the year. Okay, right, so that was a quick recap on calculations that you should know at this stage. I think let's put this into practice. Let's start revising. Let's start helping you prepare for your June exams. So let's go to the exercise that we are going to complete today. Okay, the activity that we are completing, slightly different because I'm not asking for any ledger accounts, but rather I'm asking you to complete the tangible asset note is as follows. 
So you are provided with an incomplete tangible asset note as well as additional information. Use the information given to complete the missing figures and details. The financial year of CC traders ends on the 29th of Feb 2016. Okay, so important for us to know that. All right, so we're given an incomplete tangible asset note from what we can see. Okay, and it has been numbered for us. So they're starting off with one and it goes all the way through to, let's go down to number 14. So there's incomplete information that I've got to fill in. Right, then on the next page, I've got some additional information that is provided for me as well. So additional information on land and buildings. Then I've got additional information on vehicles given to me. And then finally, there's some information about equipment that is also given to me. Okay, right, so let's start by completing. So if we go to the actual question, the first part of the question is going to be something you guys are going to do now on your own. I'm going to give you three minutes to do this. You're going to complete the details numbered one to seven in the tangible asset note. Okay, so take this down, one to seven. I'm gonna put up the tangible asset note for you and you now gonna fill in the details or the missing information for one to seven. Okay, so let's do that. All right, let's go back to the tangible asset note. Okay, so we've got one to seven and I will scroll down. Okay, so you guys are now going to fill this in. Okay, All right, guys, your time starts now. Three minutes.
Okay, all right guys, let's go through this together and let's see how many um, correct details you were able to fill in. Right, information one that is missing is straightforward. So I've got cost, accumulated depreciation, and obviously carrying value is missing. So let's fill that in. So carrying value, okay, and remember it's carrying value at the beginning of the year. Okay, so information one sorted. Right, now let's go to the second um, unknown um, heading that was left out. So the second heading under movements, so I've got additions at cost. So obviously I will then fill in disposal at carrying value. Okay, so easy marks um, if you had this in a test. Right, the third information that is missing would be my depreciation. Okay. Right, information four. Okay, so you've got cost at the end of the year. Or you can just write down cost at the end. That's fine as well. So all that's my subheadings that needed to be filled in. And now let's look at the actual calculations that were missing. All right, now you may have noticed, I thought four was missing, so I put in four here, okay? But we can have a four B. So if that was four B, what is your carrying value of land and buildings at the beginning of the year? Now remember, land and buildings, we never write off any depreciation. So your carrying value is exactly the same as your cost price, so your cost Land and buildings carrying value, the same value, 1 million rand. Okay, All right, now let's look at information five. Information five, additions at cost. In other words, there were additions made to land and buildings. How do we know there were additions made to land and buildings? So if we didn't read the additional information, my cost at the beginning of the year is 1 million, correct? And my cost at the end of the year is one and a half million or 1.5 million. So immediately there has been some kind of improvements made to land and buildings. And we can confirm that by going to our additional information. So let's do that. Additional information on the next page. Improvements were made to the property during June 2015. No property was sold during the year. So immediately, my improvements that were made would be the difference between my cost at the beginning of the year and my cost at the end of the year. And in this case, simple, an amount of 500,000. Okay, all right, straightforward stuff, guys. All right, let's now move on to information six or number six. Number six is my accumulated depreciation for vehicles at the beginning of the year. Now, you would have noticed the cost is filled in and the carrying value is filled in. So in order for me to calculate accumulated depreciation, I'm simply taking my cost minus my carrying value at the beginning of the year. So let's just get the calculator out. So we've got 320,000 minus the 150,000. And that gives us an amount of 170,000. So let's fill that in, 170,000. So that was my depreciation or accumulated depreciation rather at the beginning of the year. And remember that must be in brackets. Quickly double check, 320,000 minus 170,000 gives me my carrying value 150,000. Right, and then finally, the last amount that you needed to fill in, number seven, additions at cost. And here we're looking at vehicles. So again, we could look at the following. So I've got cost at the beginning of the year, 320,000. And my cost at the end of the year, 560,000. And also, remember, Disposal at carrying value is actually zero. So there was no asset disposal for 
um, vehicles. So my cost additions at cost would simply be the difference between cost at the beginning of the year and cost at the end of the year. So let's do that. Okay, cost at the end of the year is an amount of 560,000. And we're gonna subtract our cost at the beginning of the year, which was given to us at an amount of, just go up a bit, 320,000. Okay, so minus 320,000. Okay, and the business did buy an additional vehicle and the cost is 240,000. So let's fill that in, 240,000. Okay, right, I think it's time for us to take a break, guys. So I want, yeah, let's take a, a, a short break and when you come back, we will look at the rest of the question and the calculations. So see you in a bit. Okay, guys, welcome back. Right, we tackled the easy stuff, and guys, that was easy, come on, you've got to agree, that was easy stuff. Now it's time for us to tackle the, the much more meaty stuff, the much more difficult stuff. Okay, so let's now look at the next question. Okay, so let's go back to our question. Okay, the next part of the question wants us to calculate the depreciation on vehicles and to fill in the value for missing number eight. So in other words, what is your depreciation on vehicles? That's what we're now calculating. Right, now from that tangible asset note that I just completed, so let's just quickly go back to the tangible asset note. You would have noticed that the business bought an additional okay let's just the business bought an additional vehicle okay at 240,000 and they obviously also owned old vehicles so when we're writing of depreciation the calculation will now include disposal depreciation as well as depreciation on the existing or the old vehicles. In this case, we do not have any asset disposal. You guys with me? Right, so let's do that. Let's do the calculation together. All right, we're going to start off with the new vehicle first. So in terms of my depreciation, remember, I always need my amount I need the rate of depreciation and the number of months, the time that I'm depreciating the asset for. Okay, so if we take our new vehicle, the amount refers to the cost price. So back to the tangible asset note, and the cost price for the new vehicle was an amount of 240000 So let's transfer that information into our answer booklets. So cost 240000 Right, we're now going to multiply this by the rate of depreciation. So if we go to our additional information, okay, so vehicles, we've been told the following. A new vehicle was purchased on the 1st of January 2016. We're going to use that information in a bit. All vehicles are depreciated at 10% per annum on the diminishing balance method. Okay, so the rate we know is 10%, so let's take that through as well. So the rate, 10%. Right, and then finally, time refers to the number of months in the year that you've used the asset for. Now remember, your financial year ends at the end of February, and from the information that I just read out, the vehicle was purchased on the 1st of January. So immediately, guys, financial year ends 28th of Feb, so you have used the asset, you bought the asset on the 1st of January, so you've used the asset for the month of January and the month of February. So in other words, you're depreciating the asset for two months. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so depreciating the asset for two months. Right, let's get the calculator out and let's do this calculation. So we are taking 240,000 times 
times 2 divided by 12, and we're writing off depreciation of 4,000. Okay. Right, first part of the question answered. So let's now look at the second part, still calculating depreciation on vehicles, but now we're focusing on the old vehicle. Okay, so the vehicle that was sitting in the business for a while now, um, don't confuse that with the new vehicles. So again, let's go back to our tangible asset note to get this information. Right, now our old vehicle, remember, it had a cost price of 320000 Accumulated depreciation that was written off was 170000 and it had a carrying value of 150000 Now, if I go back to the additional information, okay, let's do that. Remember, vehicles are depreciated on the diminishing balance method. So we've got to take that into account when doing the calculation for the old vehicles. Okay, so in terms of the diminishing balance method, we take our carrying value, not our cost price, but the carrying value of 150000 Right, so let's do that on our answer sheet. So the carrying value, the amount is the carrying value, 150000 times the rate, which will still be 10%. And remember, the old vehicle has been used for the entire year. You've owned the vehicle for the entire year, so you depreciate it for an entire year. Right, and that amount would be, so let's just get the calculator out again, should be 15,000. Okay, so remember guys, 150,000 times 10%, 12 over 12 obviously cancels out, and that gives me depreciation of 15,000. Okay, right, which means my total depreciation that I'm writing off on vehicles amounts to, so I'm simply adding up, so my total amounts to 4,000 plus the 15,000, I'm writing off a total of 19,000. Okay, All right, let's fill this information in because it will be useful as we move along. Let's find that again. Okay, so my depreciation in brackets and amount of 19,000, okay. Right, let's move on. Next part of the question will want us to calculate number nine, okay? And the calculation for number nine will be as follows. Number nine, calculate the accumulated depreciation at the end of the year. So let's just go back to the actual answer sheet so we can do this properly. Okay, so calculate accumulated depreciation on vehicles and fill in the value for number nine. Right, how do we get accumulated depreciation at the end of the year? Okay, now remember earlier on I showed you guys a whole lot of calculations that you need to learn, that you need to take into account when doing the tangible asset note. So in order for us to get accumulated depreciation at the end of the year, we're going to start off with accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year. What was our accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year? So if we go back to the note, okay, further up, your accumulated depreciation amounted to 170,000. So let's take that through to our answer sheet. So beginning of the year, 170,000. Okay, let's just draw a block there. There we go. Right, what do we now do? We're going to add the depreciation that was written during the year or for the year, and we would subtract any depreciation, accumulated depreciation rather, that was transferred to asset disposal. Okay, so let's do that. Let's add our depreciation and we will obviously minus anything that was transferred to asset disposal. So back to our tangible asset note. 
okay? If we go through movements, disposal at carrying value was zero, so there's nothing for us to subtract. The depreciation that we're writing off for the year, an amount of 19,000. So let's take that into account. So my depreciation, okay? an amount of 19,000, which I'm now going to add. And remember, there's no asset disposal, so that is zero. All right, so quite straightforward, this particular calculation. So if I get my calculator out, so I'm taking an amount of, let's open that again. All right, so we starting off with 170,000. And we're adding 19,000, and that gives us a total of, oh, what did I do there, guys? Let's do that one more time. 170 plus the 19 gives us 189,000. Okay. Right, so that is our accumulated depreciation on vehicles at the end of the year, 189,000. And let's fill that in as well. Okay. Okay, accumulated depreciation a hundred and eighty nine thousand. Right, guys, the next calculation that they want us to complete, so after 9, obviously would be 10. I'm not going to go to the answer sheet for this because all the information I need is in this block. So let's firstly look at what is number 10. So 10 wants you to calculate the carrying value at the end of the year. Right, now guys, how do we get carrying value at the end of the year? There's two methods of doing this calculation. One method checks on the other. So we're going to start off with the method that wants us to start from the top. So we're going to start off with our carrying value at the beginning of the year. So I'm just going to quickly change the color of my pen so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. So at the beginning of the year, our carrying value was an amount of 150,000. We now look at movements. So what happened during the year? Additions, we bought an additional vehicle for an amount of 240,000. So immediately our carrying value is now going to increase by 240,000. There was no disposal, so we don't have to worry about disposal, but there was depreciation that we had to write off. And remember, when you write off depreciation, carrying value decreases. So if we take into account carrying value at the beginning of the year and then our movements, we then get our carrying value at the end of the financial year. So let's do that. Okay, so let's get the calculator out again. Right, so we're starting off with, at the beginning of the year, my carrying value, 150000 Plus, we then bought an additional vehicle for 240000 So remember, I'm now owning more. Minus whatever I've written off as depreciation, because my carrying value decreases. So minus the 19000 and that gives us our carrying value at the end of the year, an amount of 371000 Okay, now remember I mentioned you can actually check this calculation. So let's do that. Let's check whether we are correct. So at the bottom, remember, we've got our cost at the end of the year. And we've got our accumulated depreciation at the end of the year. So if I put this into a block, okay, there we go. If we take our cost minus our accumulated depreciation, we should get the same carrying value. So let's try that. Okay, there's a calculator. Okay, let's try that one more time. Right, so my cost 560,000 minus my accumulated depreciation 189,000 and that gives me 371,000. Okay, so I haven't made a mistake. I've double checked and I'm getting the same answer. Right, let's now move on. 
Okay, next part of the calculation. Okay, this is going to be now a bit more difficult, guys. Number 11. So I'm going to go to the actual question itself. Let's read through the question and then we'll look at the actual answer or we'll work through the answer. Okay, All right, so 10 we've done, 11. Calculate the carrying value of disposal for equipment and fill in the value for 11. All right, now how do we get carrying value? Okay, remember carrying value is your cost minus accumulated depreciation. But now we're talking about a, a disposal. In other words, we've got asset disposal. So I'm going to give you guys one minute. I'm going to put the information in front of you and I want you to look at the information and not work out, but rather read through the information, understand the information and in your mind, maybe think about how you're going to go about working out your carrying value of disposal. So let's do that. Let me put up the information for you guys, and then you can complete this task. Right, so this is the information I need you guys to read. Okay, everything on equipment, and I want you to think about that carrying value of disposal. Right, your one minute time starts now. Okay, guys, right, quite a bit to read, quite a bit to take in, quite a bit to understand. So I think let's take another break, give you, giving you guys a bit more time, and then we can look at this together. So see you guys after this break. Welcome back, guys. Right, let's look at this information together. The business decided to sell their printer on the 1st of August 2015 for 1,000 Rand. The printer originally costed 2,500 Rand and the accumulated depreciation written off as at the 1st of March 2015 was 750 Rand. The business rights of depreciation on equipment at 20% per annum on the cost price method and then they go on to tell you, on the 1st of December 2015, the business bought a new printer for 3,000 Rand. Okay, so quite a bit to take in. Going back to the actual question, and I'm going to actually complete the, this question on this page because I need to look at the information all the time. They want us to calculate the carrying value of disposal. Right, now remember guys, when we are working with asset disposal, you need to ask yourself, am I given the cost price of the asset that I'm selling? Am I given the accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year? Okay, because that helps. And am I given the selling price? Now for your carrying value, you only need your cost price and your accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year to start with the actual calculation. Okay, so let's see whether this information has been provided. So if I go to the information at the top, the business decided to sell their printer on the 1st of August for 1,000 Rand. Now remember that 1,000 Rand is the selling price. So for the carrying value, I don't really need the selling price. The printer originally costed 
2,500. So immediately my cost price is what I definitely need. So 2,500. So I've got that bit of information. And the accumulated depreciation written off as at the 1st of March 2015 was 750 Rand. Now remember guys, this financial year starts on the 1st of March and it ends on the 28th of Feb. Okay, so I need, as a starting point, I need my accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year, which is given to me at 750 Rand. Right, so immediately, what do I now need to do in order for me to calculate the carrying value of disposal? Now, remember, guys, carrying value looks at what is the actual worth of the asset when you sold the asset. When I sold this printer, what was the printer worth? Now, you're probably thinking, but hang on, can't I simply take my cost price minus my accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year, and then I get carrying value? Okay, in a way, probably slightly correct, but also incorrect, because remember, guys, carrying value at the date of sale. That's what you need to calculate. So in other words, my accumulated depreciation is given to me at the beginning of the year. This asset was sold on the 1st of August. Okay, which means I've used the asset for a certain period of time and then I disposed of the asset. Okay, how many months did I use the asset for? So from the 1st of March to the 1st of August and use your fingers, nothing wrong with counting on your fingers. So I've used it for the month of March, April, May, June, July, and the month of August. So in other words, I've used the asset for six months before I dispose the asset. So this accumulated depreciation now needs to be updated for a further six months. So how do I update accumulated depreciation? I've got to write off depreciation. Okay, so let's do that. So my depreciation will be calculated as follows. And remember, this is your depreciation on disposal. So I'm going to take my cost, which is given to me at 2,500. But in terms of the information given, equipment, so depreciation on equipment is written off on at 20% per annum on the cost price method. So I've got my cost, 2,500. I'm going to multiply that by my rate, which is 20%. And then time the number of months I've used the printer for. So remember, I've used the printer for six months, so six over 12. So the additional depreciation that I need to write off, so let's get the calculator out. Okay, so I've got an amount of 2,500. I'm going to multiply that by 20%. Okay, multiply that by 6, divide that by 12, and that gives me an additional depreciation that I'm writing off 250 Rand. So let's fill that in. Okay, right, now that I've calculated the additional depreciation, what do I do to, with this amount? I'm now going to update my accumulated depreciation. So in other words, it was 750, I'm now adding a further 250. So that would now give me an updated accumulated depreciation of, and it should be an amount of 1000. Okay, so with me. Right, what's the next step? We've got our cost, we've got our accumulated depreciation, so now we are able to calculate the carrying value at the date of sale. Okay, so that will be calculated as follows. 2,500 minus 1,000. And at the date of sale, this equipment was worth 1,500. Okay, right, not difficult, guys. So the missing figure, let's go back to the tangible asset note.
Okay, so missing figure 11 is 1,500. And remember, disposal at carrying value will always be in brackets. Okay, right, the next part of the question, they want us to calculate depreciation for equipment. Okay, so for equipment number 12, calculate your depreciation. So in terms of the information that is given, remember I've got a disposal. I've also got an addition. So we did purchase new equipment with a value of 3,000 Rand. And I've got my old equipment to also write off depreciation on. Okay, so when we set out this calculation, we're going to set it out as follows. Okay, right, I've set it out already. So fill in the value of 12 by calculating depreciation on equipment, 20% per annum on cost, on disposal, on the new equipment, and then finally also on the old equipment. Okay, three parts to this calculation. Right, now disposal, guys, we've already done the calculation. So if we go back to the information that was given, I think it was 250 Rand. So I want to quickly check. Okay, so the depreciation, remember in the previous question, we calculated the amount to be 250 Rand. So all I'm doing is I'm transferring my answer onto disposal depreciation. Okay, so 250. Okay, so it was an amount of 250. Right, now let's look at the calculation for depreciation on new equipment. The new equipment, the cost price, and you guys can double check this figure, but it is 3000. I'm getting this from the tangible asset note. I'm going to multiply this by the rate, which is given to me at 20% per annum. And then the number of months I've owned the new equipment for. So let's just quickly double check because I didn't read through that information. Okay, so in terms of the information that was given, on the 1st of December 2015, the business bought a new printer for 3,000 Rand. So again, how many months did we actually use the asset for? We've used the asset for the month of December, the month of January, and the month of February. So in other words, I've used this for three months. So in terms of my calculation, I'm going to multiply this by 3 over 12. Right, so the calculation for your new equipment will be as follows. So we're going to take our cost 3,000 times the rate, which is 20%, times 3, and we're going to divide that by 12. And that should give us an amount of 150 Rand. Right, now the last calculation for depreciation is on the old equipment. And I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible. So I'm going to quickly go to our information sheet and show you the calculation. Okay, now the old equipment, guys... The cost of our equipment at the beginning of the year is an amount of 100,000. But remember, we did get rid of a printer, okay, when we had an asset disposal. So the calculation will be as follows. You guys can do this quickly. You're going to take your cost of 100,000 minus the cost price of your disposal. Okay, I, I don't have time to check the cost price on disposal. And then we're going to multiply this by 20% for the entire year. That will give you your depreciation on the old equipment. So your total depreciation will simply be a sum of disposal, new, and old. 
Okay, right. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, so we can't do the last calculation, but I think we've, we did quite a bit in this time. Guys, remember, for the exams, the exams are approaching. You need to practice. You need to study um, and learn your formats, learn your formulas. Until we meet next time, from me, Mehesh Lal, it's goodbye and God bless.